Hello everyone and welcome to the Midweek Moment on YouTube. I am Goose, this is Cronkite. How you doing Cronkite? I'm good, it's good to be here. It has been a great week. We had a great show Sunday. We have uh, a lot of people uh, emailing, yeah. uh, showing interest in the story that we did. It's uh, Talking about the John Trump, uh, Nikola Tesla, uh, Elon Musk, I, Aaron Trump. Like I said, it's just it was, it was it was a huge rabbit hole. I mean, it's just hundreds of avenues you can go down. Oh, fantastic! But yeah, we had a, we had a great response to that. Um, looking forward to more, actually. Definitely, um, definitely. Also, I want to start out before Cronkite tells us the news headlines uh, that he'll be talking about in Sunday's show. If you have a question for our midweek moment, you can always call, text, or leave a voicemail. The number is six zero six three seven three 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 nine six. Or you can email us. What's that email address? Uh, you can email you at goose at here to chew bubblegum dot com or myself, Cronkite, at here to chew bubblegum dot com. Don't forget about the website, here to chew bubblegum dot com. That's www.here to chew bubblegum dot com. Okay, so give us some news headlines news that headlines? you're working on. All right. So you remember a few weeks ago when I was talking about Rendlesham Forest? Yes. So there's an update to that. Rendlesham Forest uh, UFOs. Are there any closer to the truth 40 years later? So that's going to be one of our stories. Uh, and then are, the, there, are they closer to the truth? Well, you just have to wait and find out. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know I don't do that on the midweek moment. I know. I'm, I'm, I, can, I can try. Give me an A for it. <laughs> uh, the Milky Way may be home to dead aliens wiped out by their own technology. Dead aliens. That's what Now, the, are they floating in space? or? Well, uh, you know, the way that this uh, headline sounds, it sounds like they might be, so... We'll find out. Okay. Uh, it says it looked like a werewolf running around. The terrifying dogman of Lincolnshire. So, oh, dogman. Yeah. yeah so. Oh! <laughs> uh, and then eight years after the Fukushima um, tsunami, you remember that? Yes, I do. Uh, Japan still is haunted by the ghost of the tsunami. So we're so going to be talking ghost. about Ghost. Yep. We're going to be talking about that. We've got a, we got a wide spectrum this week. Um, of stories and uh, I still think it is fascinating that you did not start laughing when you said uh, Uranus <laughs> and uh, well never mind <laughs> no never mind never mind uh, there's just certain words I'll gig I giggle at okay okay <laughs> um, normally during the midweek moment you know we talk about stuff that's that's um, uh, along the paranormal mm -hmm. UFOs aliens time travels other dimensions uh, we did some uh Holiday True Miracle Stories last time. Mm -hmm. uh, before that, we did, uh, what did we do before that? Uh, a missing persons case mm -hmm. uh, from uh, Tennessee. Martin was the kid's name. Yes, right? Dennis Martin. Dennis Martin. Okay. So, uh, coming up, you know, and, and we'll keep doing those. Today, we're going to take just a little different turn, and we're going to talk about James William Honest Dick Tate. Do you have anything to say about that name? Nope. And I didn't say <laughs> dictate. Dictate. His name is Honest Dick, and his last name's Tate. So why do they call him Honest Dick? Um, we will get into that momentarily. Have you heard that name before? I have. I actually Really? Have, yeah. I don't know in what context, but I have oh, heard. Oh, okay. Well, James William Honest Dick Tate was the Kentucky State Treasurer. He was nicknamed Honest Dick because of a good reputation and rapport with his colleagues. The nickname turned ironic, however, when Tate uh, stole nearly a quarter of a million dollars from the state's treasury in 1888. <laughs> he was never found. <laughs> so I guess that they changed his name to James William uh, Dishonest Dick Tate. Maybe they just named him Dick Tate. Or, yeah, yeah, they could have done that. Yeah. So, But anyway, uh, the story goes that Tate's thievery was uh, frequently cited during Kentucky's fourth constitutional convention as a reason to impose term limits on Kentucky's uh, elected officials. The one term limit remained in force on uh, most of Kentucky's officials until the state's constitution was amended in 1992 to allow the governor and lieutenant governor, state treasurer, and other office holders to serve two consecutive terms. Hmm. Did you know that? I did not know that. Okay. Now you do. And please, while I'm reading this, please play on your cell phone. Well, I'm actually trying to do, uh, I'm trying to figure out how much a quarter of a million dollars was. Oh, okay. Years. Well, I actually have that towards the end. Uh, or you can go ahead and... and no, no. By all means. Okay. Mm. 
So, uh, in the early life, James William Tate was born the only child of Nancy Taylor and her second husband, Colonel Thomas Tate, in Franklin County, Kentucky. His father uh, was a descendant uh, from Virginia. He was Scottish, uh, Scottish Irish. He was a farmer and a veteran of the War of 1812. Uh, Tate received his education in Franklin and Wolford counties and finished his schooling. See, schooling. Hmm. His university, just like you, <laughs> in 1848. Uh, later that year, the age of 17, he began to work as a clerk at the Frankfurt Post Office. On June 3rd, 1856, he married a lady named Lucy Hawkins, and they had a uh, son named Howard. He died at the age of three. They also had a daughter named uh, Amona. Okay, so Tate started his political career with an appointment by the Governor Lazarus W. Powell on the position of the Attorney Secretary of State for the state of Kentucky in 1854. He was a model Democrat. Uh, he re he uh, uh, resigned from the post when no nothing governor Charles S. Moorhead was elected in 1855. Four years later he was appointed again under the Democratic governor uh, Berthuel McGoffin and supported the uh, Breckenridge wing of Kentucky's Democratic Party uh, during the American Civil War. Uh, so it goes on to say that during the first quarter of 1888 Tate began a pattern of behavior that would have aroused considerable suspicion in a man of uh, lesser rebuke. Hmm. But because he was nicknamed Honest Dick, nobody questioned his motives. Uh, he began depositing only checks in the state bank's account instead of cash, and as usual in a short time, he paid a number of personal debts. On March 14, 1888, Henry Murray, one of Tate's clerks, noticed uh, him filing two tobacco sacks full of gold and silver coins later determined to be worth $100,000, equivalent to $2.8 million in today's money. Wow. Uh, he departed for Louisville, Louisville, leaving a note saying that he would return two days. Again, due to the nature of his job uh, this perceived uh, rec and his perceived record of trustworthiness, nobody questioned his, ap his uh, actions. After a week passed, no word from the treasurer, it became clear what had happened. Do you know what happened? He went to Mexico? Uh, <laughs> close. <laughs> Uh, let's see, after a few days in Louisville, Tate boarded a train for Cincinnati, and he then vanished, leaving his wife and daughter behind. Oh, wow. During the investigation that followed, the state's ledger, which was almost uh, in, uh, let's see, the state's ledger was found to show Tate giving some state officials loans and advances that were often left unpaid, including an advance of several thousand dollars to Governor Preston H. Leslie in 1872. Tate had apparently used some of the state attorney's money to make personal investments in mines and real estate. Wow. Uh, let's see, Governor Simon B. Buckner announced that between his uh, bookkeeping and embezzlement and his outright theft, Tate had misappropriated $24,128.50. And today's money, that is $7 million. You missed the seven there. It's 247000 that's a lot more than $24,000. Oh, did I say 24000 You said 24000 Sorry. Thank you very much. I mean, that's a lot. Of, that's yes. insane. Yes. And in today's money, it's $7 million. Wow. Uh, impeachment hearings followed in Kentucky's House of Representatives. In the Senate, uh, Senate, they removed Tate from office, and they convicted him on four counts. A criminal indictment followed, an 1895 case marked not to be officially reported. Hmm. Okay. So, despite the... Uh, uh, General Assembly's offer of $5,000, which was today $140,000 for information leading to his arrest, he was never found, though his family first claimed that they had heard nothing from him and presumed he may have committed suicide. What do you think about that? You don't steal $7 million and then commit suicide. <laughs> uh, his daughter uh, eventually admitted that she had received at least four letters from her father between April and December 1888. The letters were postmarked from British Columbia, Canada, Japan, China, and San Francisco. Another witness claims to have seen a letter uh, to one of Tate's friends written in 1890 postmarked from, uh, from Brazil. That was the last known communication from Honest Dick. 
Uh, an article in the New York Times uh, citing friends who should know claimed that Tate was believed to have died in China in 1890. Wow. What do you think about that? <laughs> I mean, if you're if you're going to do it, and you know, I, you know, I was I was I don't know how I came across that story. I was researching stories uh, for us to do on the midweek moment, you know, because we don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. But uh, I found this fascinating one. You know that he's from Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has the, the name Honest Dick, Honest Dick Tate. Then he steals so. almost $7 million and travels the world, apparently. Yeah, and he died in China. So I don't understand. Uh, I mean, so he's been, he, that was, he was playing the long game then. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, was, he, was he had that planned game. a long, long time. But just to leave his uh, wife and, and, and child. And family. Oh, yeah. wow. So. Most people were still money to have their family around. Family with them, yeah. It was still a money yeah. to, to, to bounce. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, then, and, then, you know, and it makes you wonder what he was could have been doing on the side. Yeah. So, and plus, he was loaning the governor money. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's just a historical fact from Kentucky. Wow. And the story of James William Honest Dick Tate. So Honest Dick Tate. Any comments? Dick Tate. Okay. Uh, don't forget our question of the week. What are some of your goals set for 2021? What about you? Has yours changed since Sunday? I am. Uh, I thought about growing my beard out uh, for 2021. But well, I think I'm just going to keep it clean shaven. You need to keep it clean shaven because if you grow it out, our fans won't be able to see this, this. as you've been doing. And I noticed, you know, you still have a microphone this week. I do. It's my safety blanket. That's because he is a soft talker. I am. So I whisper almost. <laughs> <laughs> but you can always call, text, or leave a voicemail for our question of the week by calling 606-373-3396. Again, our question of the week, what are some of your goals for the new year, 2021? Or they can email us. They can email us, uh, Goose at uh, goose at here to chew bubblegum dot com. That's of course you. Yes, that uh, is they me. Can, they can email Cronkite at here to chew bubblegum dot com. That of course is me. You, Cronkite, honest Dick, Cronkite. That's right. So, That's do you have right. anything to say before we close? Um, happy New Year. I was going to say that. Uh-huh. See, well, why do you always copy me? All right. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here. We will see you on Sunday. And as he said, you have a happy new year. Thanks for listening to Here to Chew Bubblegum. Tune in next time as we dive deeper into things the government doesn't want us to know.